it's not a part of it. This is just getting more of a download on the direction that you want to go, but starting with. Oh. Okay. Yep. Uh, so we want to get crystal clear on who you want to become. Mm -hmm. Now, who you want to become is going to constantly change, but by having the vision, so we've already unpacked that to a certain degree. You want to be an entrepreneur. You want to be able to create your own products. You want to get into partnerships with people of high value, high value offers that you can have equity in mm -hmm. so that you mitigate your risk, you maximize your profit, and you're able to invest more time and energy into your own offers and not mm -hmm. so much be a, a copywriting a gun for hire but an integral part of companies. Yeah, Would absolutely. That yeah, absolutely. Um, I kind of feel like I'm chasing my tail down at the bottom here, playing with the, the fish instead of when I know there's whales out there that want collaboration and I'm not quite there yet, been able to offer them the skills. And need, the so. reason why <clears throat> is not having crystal clarity on how to decode, how to break any offer down to its core essence, why it works, mm -hmm. how it works. Mm -hmm. because again that's where everything comes from so the more that you're able to isolate the mechanism the faster you're able to isolate mechanism like within the first 30 seconds yeah the more you you are obviously to yourself you're, the more valuable you are but the more yeah. value you have for other entrepreneurs who are going to invest their money they're going to put their risk on the line in order to back your words, your copy, your vision, your leadership. So you need to make absolute certain that you are advocating that you are leading down the path of, le of least resistance or the path of most abundance. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, so yep. that means you need to be able to break offers mechanisms down in any space because you want to be able to work with the top entrepreneurs, period. Mm -hmm. The entrepreneurs who have ad budget, who know how to run media, who know how to test your copy, who know how to communicate, and who love the collaboration process, the collaboration that you bring to the table. Because it's that leadership that creates the organization for these offers to become scalable campaigns, to get reach a control, and to start building brand equity to start becoming the symbol for what you solve or satisfy in the marketplace so that you are the heuristic symbol. Mm -hmm. So anytime somebody thinks about a problem, they think about your solution. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just an example, just a couple mornings ago, my girlfriend's like, where's the Neosporin? Now it's not Neosporin. It's a triple antibiotic cream, but everybody has been trained to call triple antibiotic creams Neosporin. Sure. Just like when we used to say, instead of, can you make a copy? Can you make a Xerox? Xerox is a brand. There are many copy companies. Xerox mm -hmm. was just one of them, but they're the ones that became synonymous. Mm -hmm. Yep. But that's marketing. That's being deliberate with your brand. And as a direct response copywriter, you're a direct response copywriter. You also need to be extremely aware of how to advertise brand brand and commercial advertising mm -hmm. what's the difference between brand and commercial advertising and direct response the difference well to me um brand is the symbol around your marketing advertising is the messaging to back up the the symbol um and the direct response is to get the response from the marketing the message in accordance to the brand Does that makes sense Brand commercial advertising is about constant building of equity. So everything that they put out is try is designed to make you think about their brand when you, if you know, can you hear me now? Verizon, right? Mm. So they wanted you to think about Verizon when you thought about your cell phone service. Mm. So brands invest heavily in pop culture infiltration they want to make their brand the symbol mm. and that's what they spend their money on and that's what you call a long con you're not going to necessarily get instantaneous results because it takes a while for a thought to become a belief or for an offer to become a symbol mm. that's 
human nature. It takes a certain amount of repetition. Everything that becomes a belief, everything that we learn, everything that we tell stories about is only because of repetition. And it's only through repetition that we create new conditioning and that we can, you know, as individuals, and that we can uh, 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 infect the marketplace with a brand so deeply that it's the only thing they think about when they think about the problem or, or need they have that only you can solve in their mind because you've taken that time. As a direct response copywriter, your work is determined by how much money it makes right now. Mm -hmm. Day. If I'm running an ad and I'm sending traffic to your offer, I want results. I'm not interested in building my brand. I want money now. Yeah. Because if what you wrote isn't making money now, it's inert. It's a bomb that doesn't blow up. It's worthless. And therefore, your value proposition goes way down. So that's another reason why I constantly beat the drum of having multiple creatives to test against, right? But it all mm -hmm. comes down to mechanism. So you need to be a uh, hyper aware of mechanism in every space. Supplements, financial, dating, relationships, pick up, X back. Uh, hmm. self-development, manifestation, law of attraction, business development, entrepreneurial development. All of these markets require <clears throat> a very specific mechanism for people to believe or to suspend their disbelief because our disbelief is fueled by what? Um, our disbelief is probably limited beliefs, right? Opinions. Is that where you're going? It's past stories and experience. Yeah. So we're going to take all of our pre-existing conditions, pre-existing beliefs, and we're going to project them onto everything that we see. Hmm. Yeah, makes That's sense. That's the next part of ourselves. We need to protect ourselves from future pain based on old trauma. Does that make sense? We need to protect ourselves from future pain based on old trauma. Yeah. I mean, we do that in every aspect of our lives. Sure. If you've had a shitty relationship, the next relationship that you're, that you get in, you're more likely to be guarded with your emotions. Absolutely. Yep. Be because you have the reference point of hurt, of disappointment, mm -hmm. of abandonment, of rejection. Mm -hmm. And that fear makes you act or respond or react in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So everything that you write for, you need to be aware of what story people are telling about their previous traumas. Mm -hmm. So how, 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 what's one way that you can be aware of people's previous traumas? Well, research, right? Experience research, um, speaking to people that have, that are customers in that industry, um, asking them particular questions about the problem that they had and, the kind of transformational journey they've been on since going through it might not be your product, but a competitor's product. Um, so yeah. if you're, if, so let's say you're writing for a relationship product. Mm -hmm. We know that in relationships, we just talked about it. We experience, we, we have all this hope and all that hope becomes lost hope. Yeah. That lost hope becomes hurt. And it becomes PTSD triggers. Do you have any PTSD triggers? Probably. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, something that just makes you freak out. We we, we all have them. Like I, I have a poor PTSD trigger. What is it? Poor. Poor. Yeah, I have that too. I have that too. I grew up poor. I hmm. grew up every single day having the hustle to eat and make sure that my family was fed. So that is, that's a deeply repetitive, right, conditioning story. Mm -hmm. So the more I tell a story, the more that story tells itself in my experience. Yeah, At more becomes more belief. Yeah. Are people telling a story or is a story telling their life experience? 
Mm -hmm. Most of the time, it's people's stories determining what they choose to do, how they act, how they respond, what objections they have, what objections yeah. they don't have. Yeah. So as a copywriter, yeah, you want to be able to let's go back to specificity to research, but what are you researching? What questions are you asking? And where are you getting that information? Where are you seeking that information? As copywriters, and after all the copywriters I personally work with, I've seen the majority of copywriters always go to marketing style pages to find their information. And I even consider Amazon on that list mm. because they're looking at the marketing. So what do you need to look at? Yeah. You know, like even if you get the comments and the reviews and all that type of stuff, that's all a part of the marketing. Yeah. You have to do the actual source of the product, the book, the the DVD, the video, the, you know, whatever the, the thing is that gives you the deeper insights that you need to have. Because what are we always trying to do? We're creative always capacity, trying to right? yeah. creative capacity. I am not going to make you a better writer. You're not going to become a better writer by just writing. You're going to become a better writer by hashtag cliche alert, knowing more than everybody else in the room, by, by expanding your creative capacity, which means having the eyes to know where your research needs to be so that you can in fact be a, a information leader mm -hmm. because you know what's relevant and you're crystal clear about all of the stories and objections and hurts and traumas that your audience has mm -hmm. based on the based on asking the right question and reading the right information from mm -hmm. true experts Incredible experts. And what does that allow you to do faster? Isolate mechanism. If you can understand the mechanism of, well, repetition of how people got to where they are, then you can give them the mechanism to get out of it. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. If you know how they got in, you can help them get out. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if we're dealing with, you know, like I just did winning the game of love. Mm -hmm. And the mechanism is the devotion switch, dopamine response. Yeah. But what other parts of mechanism, science, and how men and women connect and communicate? Well, what other what other sciencey kind of things are involved in that? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So if you were yeah. to, if 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 I'm a, a, I have a relationship product. I'm talking to you, Sean. Mm -hmm. I want you to give me the insights about how I'm going to be able to take my product and win. Sure. So me mechanism is going to lead to what? It's going to lead to the solution, right? Well, the, it, it could go either the problem. You're going to sell the problem. Hook. You're going to get your hook. Yeah. You're going to get your positioning. Right. Conditioning. Is that what you said? Positioning. Your positioning. Yeah, your authority, yeah, yeah. So in other words, where is the peak of emotion? What's going to get the most people to raise their hands? Yesterday, I was talking with this woman, Katie, in the group. I watched that video. It was very, very insightful. She, and in fact, she texts me afterwards. It's given the just reading into the text. It's giving me the courage to say the things that need to be said and to hit publish, even with knots in my stomach. Right. So she had all of this inhibition. First of all, she had no mechanism. Yeah, now I remember once. Oh, yeah, yeah. Her copy was the. It, it's just like the middle of a conversation. It had no mm -hmm. real beginning, middle, or end. Yeah, And it wasn't really saying anything. It didn't mm -hmm. position her as the true leader in that space. It didn't take her 15 years of real credibility that can put her above psychologists, you know, PhDs in the space yeah. that are saying, here's how you potty train your child. She did it. She created it. And she did not utilize that positioning. As the copywriter, if you were working with her, 
It's your job to isolate all of those things so that you can fix the problem. Mm -hmm. So why did I start with positioning? Why did I make, why did I extract that out of her? She knew it. She just yeah. didn't express it yet. And then once she expressed it, the acknowledgement, the awareness of that mechanism allowed her, it opened up her creative capacity mm -hmm. to be able to, en to enter the conversation at a much more meaningful point in a much more meaningful way that's going to get more people's attention and engagement and make them care mm -hmm. because it's joining the story of shame that they might feel for doing something wrong. If you are setting up your child to fear change and discomfort, you're setting, you're creating a victim. Sure. You're creating somebody who's going to be living in your house when they're 37 years old mm -hmm. or constantly coming back home. Those are the consequences. Spell it out. Yeah. But the only reason why we get to that meat on the bone, that emotional meat on the bone is the mechanism. So going back to this, dating this relationship whatever whatever product what's another mechanism that's a key mechanism in how men and women connect um oxytocin the chemical in the brain that's released whenever there's oxytocin, an internet yeah. oxytocin happens typically through touch so if i give okay. you a hug okay. you get full of oxytocin gotcha right yeah we get so what would be a non-intrusive mechanism? Uh, connection. Mm, Maybe that's good. a bit vague, but you could you could have what what makes us connect. Um, you could go into energies. I think you could take that avenue. I think you could also go down. What makes you connect? Um, sense of humor. Mm, they're more Get specifics. More. They're more specifics, right? Um. You could have, um, you know, relatabilities, commonalities between each other that builds connection. You're, you're hitting the nail on the head, but you're not speaking the words. Mm. Because none of those things are mechanism. What What is an actual mechanism? What? Why? Why do you yawn when I yawn? Um, I'm not sure the science behind that, but I know it triggers a response, right? in the brain what is what is the majority of every conversation what do you mean by that i'm not sure how to answer that what's 80 percent of the conversation or more oh it's it's uh sub communication right body language eye contact tonality uh -huh. and so what is the mechanism behind body language what's the mechanism that makes it work comfort no. No. My brain, your brain, my brain, your brain, my brain, your brain, my brain, your brain. Brainception. <laughs> uh, I mean, monkey see, monkey do. Monkey see, monkey do. Yeah. So it's some kind of relayed response. I, I'm not. I'm not sure of the science behind it. I'm, I feel like I know the answer, but I can't quite verbalize it. <laughs> the critical element to use in your own copy. I made a. I made a webinar on it. It's a great, great mechanism for dating and relationship products, for, mm. for x back products, for anything that involves basic human dynamics. And it's real. And you can take the science, just the, just the basic agreed upon science, and you can apply it. And then you can take the deeper science that explores what they really are. So I'm talking about mirror neurons. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Of course, I remember that now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We are always mirroring. When we have any kind of rapport, we're mirroring, right? We become what we're around the most. Like, for instance, my girlfriend. Mm. She uses a lot of my language now. Yeah. Mirrored it. We take on other people's habits, uh, energy, as you mm -hmm. talked about. Yeah. Because it, it like permeates us. Yeah, that's why they say the you are the, the closest five people 
that you're with, right? You become the five people you're closest to. Marineurons, right? It, it's it's like, are you a product of your environment, or is your environment a product of you? Yeah. Because you're me one way or the other. You're either deliberate, and we're always subconsciously mirroring. Period. So you're saying because that you can you can override you can override that mirror neuron by being aware of it? Is that what you're saying in a sense? More and more, yes. The more you acknowledge something out of the subconscious, mm -hmm. the more you can be deliberate about it. You know mm -hmm. how, like I say, an illusion is only real if you believe it. The moment yeah. that you expose that illusion, yeah. the moment you expose the man behind the curtain, yeah. it's having power over you. And then you can do something deliberate with it. But before that, you were uncomfortable. Yeah, because it's not in your consciousness, right? If you have something subconscious, you pull it into your consciousness, then you're aware of it and you can adapt to how you behave around that. Maybe it's a pattern or a habit or, you know, yes. probably a pattern or habit of thought. Yeah. Yeah. So, with that in mind, you and I'm going to let you choose. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mirror you in a minute. Mirror neuron. That's your mechanism. Okay. For connecting, for bridging the gap of emotional distance, for hooking up, mm -hmm. whatever type of offer and positioning that you want. What is a headline that could showcase the mechanism and immediately heuristically link it so that we're starting to create symbology in the brand to the offer, to what it solves or satisfies? So who are we talking to? Does that matter? You get to choose that. Uh, so I've created a product that could be relevant to men or women because the mechanism is universal. Yeah. So what do you? What was that? The, we have a un, I'm I'm your client. You're the copywriter. Yeah. I have a, I have okay. So okay, Sean. Thank you for isolating that mechanism. That makes You're a welcome. lot of sense. You're welcome. But. I mean, can't that mechanism be applied to men and women? So who, who do we want to go after? What is the lower hanging fruit? Absolutely. I would say the women are the lower hanging fruit. I believe that men have too much pride in, I don't need this. I'm man enough. I can, I can learn this myself. So I think the female market are more susceptible to um, wanting to dig deeper into the stuff that we put out there. Interesting. So they're the ones taking the initiative to grow and men aren't. Not not quite. I think men men grow, but they they believe that they're more capable of doing it themselves. They don't need outside help. It's more of like a you know, you know, we always hear hear it growing up, just man up, you know, just man up, just figure it out, you'll get there. I believe that that's kind of instinctively ingrained in us at this stage where we it's almost like we're losing if we decide that we're going to get up expert help. Obviously, men do. But when it comes to dating, we don't want to admit that we're getting help to date women because we believe that we should already know that, right? Whereas women, I believe that women are a little different in that sense where they're, if there's something wrong in the relationship, they believe they could do something to help it quicker more in a more instant matter, manner than, than men. You know, but don't men just show up at the bar and kind of get their pick of the litter? Yeah, some do, I suppose. <laughs> so, do we really need to help them? Help the men? Help the women? Yeah, we. I mean, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I think we can help women too. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not too sure your but your question. Show up at the bar. I'm confused. Like, why do women need help meeting men? Is that what you mean? No, not that women need help meeting men, but I think that women believe that they could do more. I mean, men think the same too. It's kind of a, it's a gray area to be talking about what performs better. I just know from our conversations is that women are more open to listening to what we have to say. Um, to, they're more, uh, let me see, they're more, they're more compliant with authority. And so if they're reading marketing campaigns with authority embedded in it, with all the proof, all the credibility, all the social proof, all of those things in there, they're probably not going to be saying, I don't need this more as opposed to compared to men who would be saying, I don't need this guy's help. I'm already good with women. I don't want anybody knowing I need help with women. Um, I'm fine. You know, that's my view on it anyway. All right, I'm going to break my 
client uh, persona. So yes, men typically respond to much more aggressive copy, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, I, I, I had Rick Duris, I interviewed him the other day, right? One of the uh, uh, pieces he wrote uh, that I just absolutely loved, it was for a, an ED product, mm. uh, erectile dysfunction. And the, the, uh, the beginning of the copy was along the lines of, if I can't use it, I'm just gonna sh I just wanted to cut it off. That's how extreme mm. he took straight the- to, Straight to the, yeah, fight a rack. Yeah, if, if I can't use it, I'm just gonna cut it off because this is not a, being a man. Mm. And he and just get right under the skin. Now that's not compliant. He made a lot of money on the list circuit with that the back end. Yeah. Yes. But you know, for men, they do typically need much more and, and younger men specifically. Men my age still need, you know, in the in the pickup realm, aggressive company. Yeah. Yeah. Um more more authority driven than the younger demo that is much more susceptible to manipulation now for women the interesting thing about like a mirror neuron mechanism because the mirror neuron mechanism would work fantastically for men because it would take all of the pressure of gaming and performing they would be focusing on their own body language on growing so that they can emit an aura of confidence yeah yeah, yeah. and how to run the room because if if you realize that you can make everybody mirror with you then you need to and and it's and it and when you utilize these one two three tips on how to run the room with mirror neurons, that's a kind of power that men would love. And in fact, you can even take that same mechanism and apply it to the business world. Mm -hmm. You know, um, everybody needs to give, whether it's online or in real life presentations, you need to be able to get people on your page you need to get the mirror neuron, you know, so we could sell this mechanism as, uh, as a consulting, uh, a, a product for consulting, for consultants. Mm. You know, here's how to build your business through mirror neurons. Mm. There's, you know, there's so many things that you can do with a mechanism when you understand how and why it works, which is what a mechanism is. Right. So. If you're going to focus on the female side of the market, yeah. what do, first of all, what age? Because younger women, women in their 20s, want different things than women in their 30s. And women in their 40s want different things. So sure. I, I would go, I mean, if, if we were going to try and make, if profit was the, I mean, not profit's obviously the main driver here. I mean, not always, but if you want to help women, I think, the time to help them is whenever they're mm -hmm, they're looking for a partner. They're looking to settle down, you know. And obviously, women are biologically more more pressed against time than men because they've only got a, they've got a smaller window to to meet, right? Um, from what I've read, and so I, I think that they they feel they feel that time is kind of creeping up on them, and they want to they want to understand how to find. Um, the perfect partner. They don't want to just, I mean, some women do end up just settling down with quote unquote, the nice guy or the provider. But I think they would like to understand how to find the man of their dreams and keep him. So that's why, you know, um, his secret obsession, all of those kind of products do well, in my opinion, is because they're playing on that, uh, the ability to control um, how their man behaves around them, you know? I'll be right back, by the way, Mark. I'll be literally okay. 30 seconds. All right.
Mm-hmm. Authority. Dr. <laughs> Sean Morrow. I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Show up in my white coat. Why? <laughs> Be careful. The FDA is watching. The <laughs> FDC. Mm. So that's just taking a, a rip off of what you just said. Sure. <clears throat> now. Write your headline in, in an opening. Write the headline what? Sorry, underneath it? Yeah, underneath, Sean, write your headline in your opening. Mechanism-based. Okay. Uh, What does that mean? Maybe you've been pulling this off for quite some time. Remember, in your not specific, group, right? <clears throat> no, no. You need something for people to anchor on, to latch mm. on to immediately. Still not specific enough. Well, yeah, I, I don't know what that means. What's that? Okay. Yeah, okay. Do you feel like the dating window is creeping up behind you? Again, that's not specific enough. And that's mm. a prefacing, right, to your mechanism. That's yeah. fine. That's good. Uh, and then you want to make sure that you hit your mechanism on that first line then. But I would say dating window, dating window is creeping up on you. The, uh, if you're going with the biological clock, it's the baby clock. Do you feel like your baby clock is winding down? Do you feel like your biological clock, uh, the door, the, the, the timer on your biological clock is about to go off? There you go. So you, you want to, I thought you wanted me to create something different from this. That's my, that's my bod. Okay. Um. Well, no, it's taking the mechanism, the idea that you had and applying the mechanism to it. Okay. So you're talking about women who don't just want to go out and attract a man. Oh, I can go out to the bar and get any guy I want. But what I really want is the man who's going to create a family with me. Who's going to be mm-hmm. loyal and devoted. How do I find that man? How do I find my own slice of happily ever after? Mm. Okay. Do you always start it off with what if, or kind of open up no. that opportunity? No. No, I, I, I sometimes I use what if questions in the actual copy, but I'll sometimes start with a what if question so that I'm clear on what the conversation is, and then I can go back and write a completely different or test 
or use the what if and then test totally different ways to enter the conversation against it. Have you ever felt like you could do more to attract? There was more, maybe. So it's not the right kind of man. It's the right man. Why do you say that? I mean, I understand, but I'm curious to know your thoughts right now. It's they don't the right want the kind of man. They want my man. Mm. So saying the kind of man, it, what it about doesn't your... have the same impact as a woman who is possessive and wanting to possess her man the man that's going to be loyal to her that's going to show up for her that's going to give to her that's going to be safe so that she can start a family and live out her childhood dreams and fantasies that's a lot mm -hmm. of emotion and while it's broad and superficial if you dive down those rabbit holes there's a lot of emotion there Mm. Always mm. trying to find a different way to say that. The reality is, it's not your fault. Just don't. Okay, because I know I know it's important to. Well, give. you don't want to put any amount of blame on the prospect, right? But to say that it's not your there's different ways to get, to say it's not your fault. Apply it instead. Um. Okay, so let's look at this. Do you feel like your baby clock is winding down? I would say something You're different without to be honest. I don't, um, baby clock. Yeah. Okay. What would you say? Do most women, is that what they refer to it as? I'm not sure. I haven't done, you know what I mean? Um, well, I like it. Yeah. But what they say is the biological clock. Right. Winding down. Winding down. Yeah. I like that. Have you ever felt like there was more you could do to attract the right kind of man into your life? What if there was a way to form a deep connection with your man immediately? Wouldn't you want to know how to easily do it? No. Um, don't say that, so. Uh.
Mm. Would you play on? I mean, my, my, where I'm thinking about going is playing on how other women cling on to the good men very early on, and they leave. They leave a lot of um, good choices. They, they take they take it off the table. What do you think? Yeah, I think that? I think that you should uh, do the opposite. I think that you should expose that as a myth because it is a myth. The right man, we want to make sure that she knows the right man is out there, but mm -hmm. only when you utilize this, can he, see, can he find you? Can he see you? Can gotcha. you, uh, give him the green light? So in other words, if we're using mirror neurons yeah. as the mechanism, then it's how she shows up that's mm. going to determine how he shows up. So she has that superpower. She has a superpower that makes men reveal their true selves to her. Mm. That's powerful. And mm. it's easy because all she's doing is about being deliberate about how she holds herself and the intention she's emitting. We all emit energy. Mm -hmm. We can feel it. So there's certain body language cues that give that certain man permission to show up. She's not, mm. she's not gaming him. She's giving him the opportunity to show her who he really is. And other women don't know how to give him that opportunity that's why he never shows up as the hero but he might be your hero mm. how does that sound sounds great mark can't wait to meet him <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know he swung that way so no i don't i don't i don't <laughs> just like to clarify for whoever's watching <laughs> Um, anyway, so, <laughs> as they said on Seinfeld, not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, so, uh, it's not always easy finding your soulmate or a man who's passionately devoted to you. So is. Here's the thing. So I'm curious to hear, I'm curious to see like where you steer the conversation. You know what I mean? Like I see you went, you went with, here's the thing, men only want to reveal the shallowest thing. How, how do you, how do you think about that structure? You know? Well, right now we're not, we're going to. Just throwing ideas out there, right? In a different session, we're going to, you know, really take the time to map these out. Hmm. Right now we're just focusing on exploring the mechanism space. Mm. So that we can figure out how that mechanism triggers the most effective copy and messaging positioning, right? Mm. So that's what we're playing with right now. We're seeing what kind of impact we can create with that mechanism in this conversation. Okay. So uh, the way I say it is you've got the mechanism, which is mirror neurons, and there's just many different ways to steer the conversation towards that as the solution. That's essentially what we're doing, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so do you see the mechanism as, is there a thing that, that, uh, let me see, is there like, so you've got your, your headline and your sub headline, for example, you've got your mechanism. Is there something that helps you steer the conversation into the mechanism, almost like a pre mechanism conversation, or is that, is that not right at all? So you're framing and prefacing the mechanism. You can do that with a new cause. You can mm -hmm. bind the two. Um, you can have your call outs right in the beginning that lead to your mechanism, mm -hmm. you know, so everything that you do, you get to choose how it leads to your mechanism or how it integrates your mechanism. Interesting. Okay. Does that makes sense. It does a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose when I see so, it, it'll, it'll make more sense. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, here's mechanism. unless you show up
So what you're trying to bring out in this mechanism is that no matter how men, a man acts with another woman, he's not going to be able to game the person who buys this product, the woman who buys this product. She's going to be controlling the situation with her mere neurons. She's controlling the room, so to speak, running the room. You know how they say, read the room? Yeah. She's writing it. So is this something that women can actually do though? Is this something you've seen work with mirror neurons? Yeah. Is it kind of similar to Socratic questioning in a way where you're leading the conversation through questions only with this, it's you're leading. You're leading through your energy and body language. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And you're letting him, because of the space that you create, fill that space with his authenticity because he can't show up with anything else. Otherwise, he'll realize he's exposing himself as a fraud. You there? Alrighty, we're back. Yeah, back in action. My bad. Uh, so, yeah. So, do you do you see how? First of all, you choose the mechanism. Mm -hmm. You have to choose a mechanism based on asking the right questions. So before you can even start getting into this conversation, none of this copy exists. These ideas don't exist without that mirror neuron mechanism first making the copy possible. Then the next step is yeah. exploring the space, yeah. what that mechanism can do for your messaging, for your positioning. And then it's getting really specific on that one thing, one thing. You know, what are you really focusing on? What's the real problem? What's the real solution? And how does the mechanism most powerfully get them from point A to point B? That's what makes the mechanism so powerful in your writing is when you have it, you're, everything you're doing is very deliberate. You're not just randomly writing shit that has no foundation to exist which makes you feel mm -hmm. like, what am I doing? Now you have a clear and present mechanism that allows you to riff copy off of its scientific truth, off of its scientific backing, off of its scientific foundation. In this case, mm -hmm. mirror neurons, the, just the basics of mirror neurons is if, if, if you are a conscious, conscious presence in the room, then you can take the unconscious need of like, if you yawn, I yawn and take it to that next level of mm -hmm. influence and even control. Now, so, you're first, right. before, you go, before you go, ask that question, leaders, world leaders do this all the time. They, they hold themselves, let's say at a podium, in a very mm -hmm. specific way they're using the, they're trained to do this a good book to read yeah. is called the political brain it, it's okay. uh, absolutely fantastic it has nothing to do with marketing and yet everything you read in that is going to trigger ideas for different ways that you can write copy because but the body language of being able to stand at the podium and demand you know, when they say he has presence, he has an aura. Yeah. Right. That's because that person is commanding the room with their mirror neurons. <laughs> They're the strongest presence there because they are the most uh, deliberate. Isn't it, a, isn't it a combination of obviously it's deliberate deliberation. You still there? Bring it up. Um, deliberation, but isn't it? I've read a lot about slow communication, and a lot of it is being the most comfortable um, in terms of chemistry in the brain. It's the one that has the most um, serotonin, 
is the one that's the highest ranking uh, person in the room, right? Um, so you've got sub communication. Obviously, you can you can you can convey that you're very relaxed. Even if you're not, you can still convey that in your body language, and that'll naturally become a part of you. Um, even if you're not relaxed, even just you know, it's kind of like priming. Tony Robbins talks about priming, being able to prime himself into a certain state. I think that if you can leverage your body language to prime yourself and to become uncomfortable, even though you're mentally not, um, that's all a part of it. Maybe I'm, I don't know, I'm ranting. Absolutely. <laughs> and that mechanism could be used for copywriters selling their services. Body language you have relaxation. Well, mirror neurons. And oh, yeah. Teaching, yeah. Them how, teaching them the tips for how to yeah. maximize the radiance, the projection of their mirror neurons, so that you are the most powerful person in the room at all times, so mm -hmm. to speak. Whether it's on Zoom, you know, video, whether it's in person, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So um, it would work for people who uh, do give keynote speeches, you know, who, who, like people like Tony Robbins, uh, uh, the mechanism could work on the business level. Hey, you want, uh, you want to get a raise at work? Uh, it can work in relationships. Yeah. Right. Uh, is your man, is your woman, uh, not present is, are they emotionally distant? You don't need to say anything. Your body is saying it all, mm -hmm. but you're not aware of what your body is saying and why. So what is your body saying and how does it influence your partner? You know, mm -hmm. so there's, a, you know, a, a mechanism could work. Uh, that mechanism, that mirror neuron mechanism can work just as well as the devotion switch because it's scientifically backed. It's something that we can relate with because we've all felt it at some point in our lives where we feel like, oh, wow, I've got a lot of people's attention. I feel big, right? Yeah. Feeling comfortable is a big part of that. Feeling confident is another big part of that. And how do we feel confident? By understanding it deeply. Confidence, so if we're yeah. saying that we're going to understand it deeply, but how to utilize it simply, then you know, we got that easy button and it's the path of most of the path of least resistance or most abundance. Yeah. Um, would you, would you say the devotion switch? So just going back to your example with the mirror neurons is the devotion switch almost like a subset of the mirror neurons. It's kind of the same thing. It's in the same realm, but instead of saying it's a mirror neurons, you're activating a switch of devotion within your mind by leveraging mirror neurons or is that something of the two separate mechanisms well, you could but that might overcomplicate it because it's dopamine and when we right. are in the courting process in relationships both people are experiencing massive amounts of dopamine and then as they get intertwined and comfortable the dopamine response lessens on both sides and that's when people emotionally drift because they need that hero trigger, that dopamine response, that pleasure and reward center yeah. in their brain constantly be firing. Otherwise, they have no drive in life. They get depressed and they usually lash out at their partners. Have you any books on, on that topic that you've read that kind of helped clarify dopamine in the brain? I can send you some, yeah. That'd be dope, yeah. Um, I've written, I mean, a lot, uh, a lot on it. I mean, another, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, an, another hook, another, sorry, mechanism here could be the belief structure, neuroplasticity, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say we wanted to sell binaurals, right? Yeah. So binaural beta. The, the idea that your brain is hardwired and therefore your circumstances can never really change is completely untrue. Your, your brain has neuroplasticity. You, your identity is completely made up. It's just the same chemicals talking to each other, the same neurons firing with each other and more neurons coming to fire with those group of neurons, that neural net that makes your identity, that makes you who you think you are. 
Hmm. But if you break those neuron relationships, you can become somebody else who has no resemblance to the way you talk or act or think right now. Imagine mm -hmm. if you took that power and applied it into your relationship. Because right now, your relationship is stuck in time. It's, it's stuck in a, at a place in time when the love that you had became unexciting. And neither one of you feel passionate about your relationship anymore. Even though you both acknowledge there's still a lot of love there. So why isn't he still pursuing you? What happened? Why did he stop? Am I not attractive anymore? Is this really going to work? I don't know if he has the devotion ability. You know, so now, you know, it's just like call outs, mirror neurons. Now you as the copywriter are giving them the mirror neurons to activate inside of them. So the mirror neurons are basically any story that we're telling ourselves have ever told ourselves or are aware of can be triggered by somebody else. For instance, if you look at my bank account, you might go, I want that. You, know, you mirror neuron with it because there's a story that exists about something you want or don't want. Right? Are you, are you offering it, Mark? Are you offering your bank account? <laughs> <laughs> uh. But that's what happens. We mirror with what we want. We mirror with what we're afraid of. We mm -hmm. mirror with what we fantasize about. We yeah. mirror with what we crave and, and, and imagine, right? So what are we mirroring with? The reason why you were even interested in working with me is because you mirrored with what I've created and you know you can create it too. Mm -hmm. Or way you say, I mean, yeah, you're, you're pretty much saying you see yourself in... <laughs> Mirror, yeah, I understand. It's kind of like you're you're connecting with, you vis you you imagine you you visualize yourself in the other person's ability. Like in the example for you, I'm I'm visualizing being able to do what you do. So you said that's the mirror neuron, right? Exactly. You yeah. you 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 future pace yourself. Yeah. And that's what makes like this kind of mechanism powerful in a dating product, in a financial product, or just a broad self-development product. I mean, we can make this about making money. Are you about always, are you leveraging that mirror neuron in, in not all of your copy, but majority, it depends on the mechanism. So you've, you spoke about dopamine, but so much you can talk about that neuroplasticity. You're also talking about mirror neurons. A lot of it is, is, um, is associated around the brain and how we connect with each other as humans. So am I wrong in saying to summarize the mechanism that, that you've seen work? is based on a lot of the psychology around how we connect as humans? Uh, in certain areas, yes. Okay. Less so financial. Yeah. You know, they yeah. want numbers. And the mechanism needs to be based on how those numbers become real for them. Yeah. You know, yeah. here's how I did it, and here's how you can do it too. Mm -hmm. Step by step, specificity, specificity. Be more logical that too, wouldn't it? You'd be telling a more logical part of the well, brain. Well, you're, you're, you're going through the logical brain to trigger the emotion mm -hmm. because nobody ultimately makes their decisions based on logic. Yeah. They yeah. do based on the way they feel about that logic. Yeah. Or if their feelings overwhelm logic, which is really what we want. We want to disrupt logic. We want to malfunction. Interesting. Logic. You said because you want to overwhelm logic? Yes. Interesting. We will get, because when you overwhelm something, you disrupt it. And when you disrupt it, you open it. And that's what makes us more receptive to everything that goes against what we think is possible. It's only because we think something is impossible that we don't take action on it. But when we get are given permission to see that it is possible, then we open our mind to it, and then with the mechanism can see how we can then repeat that, replicate that, duplicate it. And that's what gives us the permission to act. Otherwise, if we don't understand how, the desire to have it won't override the desire to act.
you still won't act because you're still telling a story about how it's not possible. Yeah, I understand. You're, you're, that, you're, you're, yeah, go ahead. And go that ahead. exists in every market in some way, shape, or form in the dating relationship market. What do people fail at? Women in this case, even if they're gorgeous, can sometimes feel you know insecure. In fact, some of the most gorgeous women I've ever dated and, and was married to are the most insecure fucking women on the planet. Yeah, they feel like they got a lot to live up to, right? They've got to be this perfect person, right? Or they don't think they're that beautiful and they think everybody's full of shit mm-hmm. because they're telling themselves that story. Mm-hmm. Usually because they grew up with a mother or a father that didn't make them feel beautiful. I mean, it usually just, it, you know, because the majority of what we think and believe was set in stone by the time we were seven fucking years old. What does a seven-year-old know about anything? Nada. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. And would you, would you go into that conversation too? Would you go into how, like say we're doing self-development, for example, we're doing self-development, not relationship, but say a a 21 day, get, you know, get your life together kind of thing. Right. Um, I'm curious to see your, your take on that. Just this alone, 95% of your attention is driven by the subconscious and the subconscious is open the most between the ages of three and seven. Yeah. So it's a matter, it's not a matter of learning new things, but getting rid of the subconscious programming that sabotages your results. Yeah. So there's a self development that can work anywhere in just about any product, that mechanism. And yes, it's based on brain science because in self development, the majority and relationships and quite frankly money but less so health and supplements are based on what we believe is possible sure. therefore if we disrupt that overwhelm that we malfunction it and therefore all of that we don't need to say it's not your fault because we're giving them permission to believe in something Sorry, I just got pinged. Uh, we're, no, you're okay. <laughs> we're positioning them to believe that what was previously impossible is not only possible, but actually quite easy when you know this. Right. This is the thing you need. Um, that's interesting. I, uh, I see. I see. I see. So from my understanding so far is that you're entering the conversation. You've got your headline, your stuff, headline, all that stuff. Um, you're obviously, you, you're, You've got it. You're strategizing from the get-go. Okay, what are we talking about here? What's the mechanism? We find that mechanism. You know, why why is it affecting the person we're speaking to? Um, so we're we're trying to get them to raise their hand, as you mentioned, right? Let me give you a specific example. Why am I yeah. starting with mechanism on your first session? Because it's the core. It's the it's the focal point around your sales message, right? It's the core of what makes the thing work. Everything like your possible. Oh, we were at that time. So if you, you as the copywriter mm-hmm. are always going to have your own disbelief, right? Yeah. When you write something, you're not necessarily sure if it's true. Yeah. Or I haven't. Personally, you know, I've seen a lot of copywriters struggle with this, writing financial copy, writing self-development copy, writing dating copy. I've never fucked five women in my life. I've never made a million dollars in my life. I've never achieved X, Y, Z. And therefore, everything I write feels like a lie. Interesting. So when you understand why what you're writing is possible, is true, it opens up your subconscious where all of these that's not true i can't do this are stored and rewrites it into all i need is this and it's easy so the reason why we're starting with this is not having mechanism uh, uh, makes a lot of things feel impossible to you as a copywriter to easily create winning promos ads whatever it is 
right? Mm -hmm. That's yep. a, a critical blockade, mental, emotional blockade that, that says this isn't easily possible. But when you understand mechanism deeply, everything you write will predictably convert. And so everything that you believed was impossible all of a sudden is way easy. Mm. Does that make sense? It does. It's very deep. I'm, I'm still wrapping my head around it. Like, um, I think I, I've done a lot of marketing research and a lot of different studying with different marketers and stuff. They talk about unique mechanism, and that's typically, you know, the five-step process or the the empathetic five-step process to do X, Y, Z, right? I'm not sure if I'm right in saying that there's a difference here, unique mechanism and mechanism behind why it works. Are they the same? Am I right to get tangled in that? Or what do you think? Just look at mechanism like this. Yeah. It's what bridges the gap between problem and solution and, and makes it possible, right? So without the mechanism, there's no bridge from the problem to the solution. There's just ideas. Mm. And sometimes those ideas can hold water, but most of the time they won't. When your copy's backed by a mechanism, it gives your copy clear and present direction. Yeah. And okay. everything you write has a purpose. Whereas without this mechanism, everything you write doesn't have a purpose. Mm -hmm. You're just trying to get enough emotional juice to get people from one line to the next with no real reason for them to, no real purpose. Because you mm -hmm. didn't have that purpose inside of you when you yeah. wrote it, that intention when you wrote it. People feel intention. Yeah. Just as much as they read words. Yeah. That was something you mentioned on that call yesterday was you can sense the intention behind the reader. You know, like the, I forget her name was a kitty. She she had intention behind why she was writing. Whereas I think now you've made the distinction, like a lot of people write without that intention. And like, I know I was doing that where I'm just writing and seeing where the conversation goes, you know, as opposed to, okay, this is what we're trying to do. Let's, let's dig deeper and let's, I don't know, do you, when you've got that in mind, do you still kind of let the conversation and see where it's going when you're writing with a mechanism in mind? Does it just come to you? Are you strategic in the way you write? Are you a tactitioner and say, we're covering this, we're covering that, we're gonna talk about this. You just let it flow to you. So for instance, when I write a video script, mm -hmm. I'm gonna lead with the lead that I think mm -hmm. is going to be the most effective, but then I'm going to come up with four or five different other conversation to utilize that lead. Mm -hmm. I mean, to utilize that mechanism. So frame it in different ways. And by framing it, or you can even try different mechanisms in your leads and see which mechanism gets the most people to raise their hand or creates the most conversions. Mm, yeah. I'm, I'm still wrapping my head around the mechanism. I, I get it. It's just your ability to, put, to pull it out of every single idea. Like for example, I, I've had a penny drop moment yesterday whenever you mentioned that the mechanism in that uh, potty training was the fact that the other competitors' methods don't work and that in itself is the mechanism, I was like, oh, right. So then all the emotion after that, which is these create yeah. trauma and negative conditioning and this doesn't, which path right. do you want to That's where you get your tale of two futures element. Yeah, can, I don't think I'm quite you, at the point where I can just, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I just said, I don't think I'm quite at the point where I could create a mechanism from nothing, but I, I'm grasping how you're coming up with them. So I think that's a well, good it, sign. It, it, it's it's freeballing. There's, there, there's no math that says mechanism here. You know, I could, right. for, for this copy right here, I could use heuristics yep. as a mechanism and give it a, 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 a funny little branded name. You know, that we all okay. think in stories and symbols and associations and yeah. all those stories are conditioned and it's the story that we're telling that chooses the life we live. So do you mm -hmm. want to choose the story you're telling so that you can choose the life you live? There's another mechanism. And then here's how to do it. You know, I could you would give it a own. name. You give it a name. Yeah. yeah could, uh, you know, uh, uh the what was it the 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 you know i i've used just the old story i've done that a lot 
you know, something really simple. Mm. Or you can call it your, um, if they are feeling like uh, every everything I do goes wrong, it, it, it goes wrong, everybody I meet runs away from me, you can call it, you know, the uh, victim switch. But you're not a victim. You're actually creating this. You're not a victim at all. You're actually one of the most powerful people you've ever met. In fact, you are the most powerful person you've ever met because you created all of this. But here's the thing. You can't change your circumstances until you acknowledge that you are this powerful, that you do create this. Because how can you change something that you are giving your power away to? You can't and you won't. You know, so you know, you're getting in the mechanism that way. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the idea of mechanism is an interesting thing because you can you get to invent it and then give it its consequence. Mm -hmm. A mechanism that another copywriter uh, at the Immune Now company did was a it's a Georgetown hook. But the mechanism was the biochemists at Georgetown University were the, the ones who re, uh, discovered this breakthrough monolaurin research, right? And it's because of that research uh, that is allowing for this amazing antimicrobial natural substance that has zero side effects to be hitting the marketplace. Not so the mechanism was the actual research? The mechanism was the team of researchers that, that, that formulated the idea for the immune now product. Well, the mechanism was what how monolaurin works, but the framing of the mechanism that gave it credibility and authority were the people behind it. Right. So then, okay. The people behind that mechanism makes the mechanism, you know, like in the Princess Bride, coated with chocolate makes it go down easier. Right? Mm, yeah. Yeah. So what i want you to think about and and i actually want you to write this so we got two months of hardcore sessions starting up you know i mean this is this is just tip of the iceberg and we're gonna spend next time before we go elsewhere we're gonna i'm gonna uh I'm going to isolate five different offers so that we can go over their mechanisms. Awesome. I'm so hyped for this, man. <laughs> yeah. Because the easier and the more second nature that you're going to be able to see these things and isolate them and pull them out of thin air, which is really what it is, mm -hmm. but it, it, it's, it's all about you know, it's like, if you don't know about mirror neurons, how are you going to ever think about it? You would have to right. <laughs> research for sometimes hours just to get to it. You just feel like, oh, I don't even know if this is right. So it's, it's, we're also going to go into how to research, how to ask the right questions so that coming to these mechanisms, is just a second nature is what you're perceiving. I do. Right. Right. And, and by the way, you know, we can, we can go for another hour and come up with another 10 mechanisms for just this copy, hmm. just this, that we're playing with. Yeah. So a couple things, one, I want you to write down one month from now where you, what, where you see yourself, not just goal writing, but where you actually see yourself, what you envision. And then the same thing from two months from now. Now, here's what's interesting. The person who writes down those things one month from now won't exist because you can't take who you are right now with you if you want to be worth millions of dollars as a copywriter for your own products and for partnerships where you have mitigated risk profitability. Mm -hmm. So the, the person who writes these things won't be the person who experiences them. That's what makes this interesting. I want you to be able to isolate 
the growth because when you can acknowledge it, it makes it easier to keep moving forward, to keep doing it, to be passionate about it. Even if you're not passionate about writing copy, you'll mm -hmm. be passionate about this because of how it opens up the possibility of abundance in your life. And then I want you to, to uh, the, the brass tacks, the homework is taking this, this document that we have open and I want you to write five different leads. And the product is a, 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 a video series, maybe complemented with a few binaural tones for the subconscious conversation. And it's teaching women how to mirror neuro, what that means, teaching them about presence, about energy, about bio, the biochemicals, about the, you know, so there's going to be all these different videos that teach women how, not just what mirror neurons are, but how to exercise them, how to utilize them, how to apply them at, in public places, on dates, online, when you're not even there in person. Yes, you can feel somebody's energy behind a text if that person has a strong presence has a strong mm. mirror neuron ability. Mm. So write three different leads for this product or five different leads for this, for this idea and explore the mirror neuron mechanism in multiple ways. So just to clarify, it's not for the this dating way, thing. Oh yeah, go ahead. By the way, why do we mirror the way we mirror right now? What is that based on? Conditioning, right? So Survival. In terms of what determines how we mirror, most of how we mirror neuron is not conscious. It's unconscious. It's subconscious. That's conditioning. Sure. So the first point is to learn how to be deliberate. The second point, how to take all the subconscious bullshit away, clear it away, so that we can continue being more and more and more empowered, competent, and comfortable. Right? Mm. So you yeah. got those leads. You got your... Two one month and two month exercise. Yeah, and basically speaking to your future self. Okay, and it'll be interesting to see how certain parts of you die in order for new parts of you to live and thrive. Hmm. Because that's what it is, and that's what it feels like. And then uh, next session, uh, we'll talk about that in a second time. Uh, we're gonna hit more on the on the uh, mechanism uh, exercises, and then after the end of that, we'll uh, ascertain where you're at and what needs to happen next. But there's yeah, uh, yeah. How does that sound? It sounds good. Can I just ask a few questions on that? What you just said? Yeah, go for it. Uh, the envision where I see myself in the envisioning is that just in terms of. I mean, what, what are you looking for? I mean, I suppose it's probably a silly question. Just Money, right? lifestyle, <laughs> what I'm doing on a daily basis, the conversations that I'm having, what I feel is possible for me that felt impossible. Okay. And then the five the leads. The people I'm connecting with, the type of partnerships that I'm creating, the way yeah. that I'm leading partnerships, the way that I'm showing up to these partnerships, the way that I'm attracting these partnerships. All of that. Okay. Um, and then the five leads is also just based, it's not based on the dating, it's based on the video series. It's based on this 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 lead. I was just giving you like ideas for definition of the product so you know where you're going. If that makes yeah. any difference, how you would write that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no problem. So today's Thursday, what does Monday or Tuesday look like for you? Does that um, give you enough time? Yeah, I could do that. Um, let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Next week. Yeah, either either's fine, really. Um, what do you prefer, Monday or Tuesday? Either works. Tuesday, Tuesday be good. I'll I'll try and flash this out properly. I might I might get it done quicker. Um, same so same time, yeah. Yeah. Hours. Okay, sweet. So get on that, and then I'm gonna uh, 
uh, send you this. I have to render this video. I'll send it over just so you have it in your uh, files. Um, yeah. I find even myself, sometimes when I rewatch these videos, I discover things. Yeah. You uh, kind of insight find little nuggets. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, don't be afraid to re-listen and also observe yourself. It's, it's always, I always find it interesting to observe myself and isolate things that I wasn't aware of. And uh, by thinking about what I was not thinking about at that time or what I was thinking about allows me to have more clarity. Interesting. You know, yeah. on how I respond and react so that I can always, because it's the, your, your financial freedom is going to be directly tied to the, how fast you grow. And how fast you grow is oftentimes how much you're willing to let go of, not what you learn. Removing the clutter as opposed to adding more to it, right? Right. So what we want to do is simplify your life. Have your tool belt with a few critical major tools like mechanism at your disposal, and then you're going to be able to lead anything. Tapping into that right. creative part of copywriting, like you mentioned, right? Tapping it into filtering your your logical mind through the creative mind instead of the other way around. Yeah, which I think I'm yeah. now, which is why it feels so fucking hard. <laughs> and why would you feel passionate about that shit? That's hard. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm passionate about resistance. So what? <laughs> get you on that those tools and on the path of least resistance you may not feel passionate about it but at least you'll be like oh yeah got this no problem hmm. i think yeah. the passion will come whenever i provide the value to whoever i collaborate exactly. with oh man results. when you move mountains those fist pumping moments and <laughs> and by the way and we'll get into this celebration is something that you're going to be integrating into your life at a massive level i like the party a good thing <laughs> And I don't know, just drinking and whatever it is, however yeah. it is that you refill your tank is so critical yeah. to getting the most out of everything that comes your way. Well, we'll go through that because that's mindset stuff. But uh, any other questions before we go? No, man, I'm super hyped. Really, really great call. I can't wait for this. I'm proper buzzing here about Sweet. this like so. Yeah. And the more you dive into it, and please feel free to uh, voice message me, text me, whatever. Hey, I'm, I'm bumping up against this, blah, 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 because the faster we help you break through those questions and confusions, the easier it gets to trust your natural leadership ability. Because once you really ingrain these things, you can't not be a top leader in this business. Right, 100%, man. I'm excited. I, I like how simple you kind of break it down. It's, um. It's refreshing to hear. Like, so. It's going to keep getting simpler. It really it yeah. really is. As as things that are confusing uh, depart from the unknown into the conscious, it is so much fun. Really? Okay. Awesome. Um, All right. Man, I'm going to let you go. I'll send you the video. Yeah. Hit me with any questions, and then I'll see you Tuesday, same time. Let me know how to sort you out for this training, by the way. All right? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll send... Uh, uh, just a little Google thing over that shows everything that, you know, a lot of what we're doing and then, you know, just so it's all written down and then, uh, yeah. PayPal. Yeah. Yeah. Easy peasy. No worries. Sweet. And then, you know, also in that it talks about how, you know, I'm also here mentoring you, you know, months after, you know, four months after, and, you know, potentially, you know, we could be working together. We can be doing, you could be getting into the agency. I mean, that so many things open up. So, um, but one step at a time, yeah. Yeah, no problem. I look at, I look at it absolutely. Um, yeah, I'll take into this man. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Cool. Sweet brother, you're doing amazing. I'm uh, really hyped on just what growth you've already shown, and I, I'm just I, I I really am excited to see where the journey takes you hmm. because you're going to do cool things. I know that. Hmm. Thanks, man. I'm looking forward to it. I, I it's you know it's blind spot. Don't know what I don't know what I don't know, but I think you have a better idea of that for now. I like so. Yeah, be good. It's actually easier just to let go of knowing. You know, it's like I and I'm being totally serious. When I was a kid, I decided I'm never going to learn anything. 
because the moment I learned something, I realized it was harder to unlearn it and get past it. So I was like, I ain't integrating anything. You know, everything's possible. This is just what I'm aware of now. Hmm. So that when the next step reveals itself, I can just let that go. I have no ego attachment to it whatsoever. Hmm. And that's so critical to be, have that mindset of being excited to constantly discover new things, but never learn. Never integrate it into your psyche. Yeah. Because then it has power over you instead of empowering you, right? Mm -hmm. Always remember that. That is so key. Love discovering new things and let go of everything that's irrelevant. It's not learning. It's just a little boy, that little boy curiosity that loves the adventure of discovery. That's what mm -hmm. this is. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, All man. Right. Uh, hit me up yep. if you have questions. I'll talk to you otherwise. No worries, man. Thanks for your time, dude. Have a good yeah. one. Later. See ya.